Des Moines is a fictional Southern American state in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's perhaps the most populated of all of the states that we visit, and also perhaps the most environmentally diverse. From the rich soil of Scarlet Meadows, to the wet swampland of the bayou, and the sprawling city of Saint Denis, there's so much going on in this small region that it's no surprise that it has a rich history. Though this land is now thriving as an example of the industrial age, Le Moyne is a land that is built by slavery and scarred deeply by the Civil War. During the American Civil War, Le Moyne was a member of the Confederate States of America, and as you can imagine, the loss of that war changed the lives of Le Moyne's inhabitants forever. And so it's no surprise that there are some disenfranchised members of Le Moyne society today or at least in 1899 when Red Dead Redemption 2 is set. Which brings us to the focus of today's video, a study, if you want to call it that, of a gang comprised of ex-Confederate soldiers and disenfranchised citizens of the state of Le Moyne, the Le Moyne Raiders. Now, the Le Moyne Raiders are predominantly encountered in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4 of the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2, however you can encounter them in the open world as early as Chapter 2. However, as far as the main story is concerned, your first encounter with the Le Moyne Raiders depends entirely on which order you do the missions in. The Raiders can be encountered in a small capacity in Red Dead Online, however that's the online and I don't know much about it, and as we all know, Red Dead Online is set before the events of of Red Dead Redemption 2. I'll give that an overview because I'm not a massive fan of Red Dead Online and it's never given me a reason to care. By 1898, Cecil Tucker associated himself with the Le Moyne Raiders in exchange for their protection. Tucker is known as an arsonist and murderer who specifically killed women and children in their beds. He's a bounty that can be captured at Fort Brennan, which appears to be almost a favourite hiding spot of the Raiders. The Le Moyne Raiders also appear in a fair few missions of the Moonshiner's stuff, where they can be found guarding the Braithwaite family's moonshine operations, and utilise their services for other things, so it seems as if the Braithwaite family is quite familiar with the Le Moyne Raiders, and likes to use them as hired guns. Come 1899, their first mission appearance, like I said, depends entirely on which order you do the missions in. So for me, that introduction was further questions of female suffrage. A mission in which Arthur and Sadie Adler ride into Rhodes to collect some supplies. Everything goes smoothly until Arthur and Sadie are riding out of town. And this is where we have our first encounter with the Lemoyne Raiders. Hey there! Hey. What, uh, what you folks up to? Just heading home. You're in Lemoyne Raider country. Keep it cool, you need to pay a toll to pass through here. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? How about you pull over right now? Pull over? That's what I said. Hey, how's about this? Oh. Go, go, go! Shit! Let's get the hell out of here! Go! I'm gonna run this son of a bitch down! The Le Moyne Raiders initially attempt to shake down Arthur and Sadie to pay a toll, and when refused, turn aggressive. Down the road, coming into something of a Raider ambush, it would appear as if they intended to rob them anyway. Regardless, they didn't cause Arthur and Sadie any issues, and they got away without a scratch, killing every single Raider who attacked. Though one does try to flee, and it's completely up to you as to whether or not you let him. And now we know what the Le Moyne Raiders look like. They are easily identified by the yellow bandanas that are worn by each of the members of this gang, and they appear to believe that Le Moyne is their territory. In itself, not especially significant, gangs have been laying claim to territory and fighting any who oppose them since the dawn of time itself, however, it doesn't take long for us to learn that this is perhaps more so out of some misplaced or twisted sense of patriotism than anything else. If we find one of their many camps dotted around Le Moyne, we can learn more about their beliefs and why they are doing what they are doing. Or at least the excuses they tell themselves for their heinous actions. What the hell's wrong with you all? I hardly said a word. Just feels like we ain't getting nowhere. It's the end of the century. It seems like we ain't much further on than we was in 65. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. We can still live free. 
We can still say we don't recognize you or answer to your laws. There to be one man living the truth and a million living a lie. Let me tell you something. Now, you all know that most of us old timers, we fought alongside each other. Third Le Moyne Regiment, the summer of 62. We was hunkered down by Copperhead Landing for weeks. It was a terrible time. It was terrible. Food was rotten. Humidity was unbearable. Nothing we had ever got dry. But we knew that sooner or later the enemy would be coming down the line of Hachi if they wanted to take San Denis. And sure enough, one morning, we woke to the distant sound. The boom of a cannon. Next thing you know, there's grenades raining down on us, modified artillery shells, leaving man with the most horrific wounds. That's like nothing you've ever seen. And then I get blown up into the air, and I'm as high as a house. And then everything goes black. And then I come to in a cloud of smoke. I think I must be at the gates of hell. And then it clears. And I see a swarm of them damn blue bellies. They're not 20 feet from me. And I ain't got no rifle. I ain't got no gun. I ain't got no nothing. So I just turn and I run at them. And they raise their rifles and they fire. But it don't make no sound. Their powder was too damp. So I get in there and I take them with my fist one by one until I know they're dead. And I just walk out of there as calm as the night. Something's only lost if you let it be. And as far as I can tell, you're all still breathing, even though you're a bunch of lifeless saps. So buck the hell up! You hear me? What we can gather from this particular encounter is that the Le Moyne Raiders were founded in 1865, and its original members were comprised of soldiers who fought in the 3rd Le Moyne Regiment for the Confederacy, and therefore this gang was organised in protest of the Union winning the war. They believe that their actions are intended to liberate Le Moyne from what they perceive as oppression, which is kind of ironic for a gang that can be seen terrorising and murdering people, though it's worth mentioning that they seem to prioritise attacking those who they perceive as against their cause. However, that's a very flimsical philosophy, as such a branding could be applied to anybody who conforms to regular society. Perhaps this is designed as mirroring a flaw in the Vanderlyn gang's own philosophy, but perhaps that breakdown is for another video. At some camps they hold hostages, at which they seem eager to preach their beliefs. Let me go, and there's no bad blood. No bad blood. There's more than 40 years of bad blood between you and us. Maybe more. What are we going to do with him? Leave him alone. For now. He's worth more when he's breathing. You're a disgrace to Lemoyne. The lot of you. I don't care what he's worth. You don't disrespect the cause like that. You young and sure get fired up and stupid, don't you? He disrespected the cops. This police officer was abducted by the raiders while simply doing his job, and was killed after riling up a young member of the Le Moyne raiders with minimal effort. He was tied to a post and completely defenceless, and that mattered very little. You can intervene and save the man, however you learn more if you just don't. However, I did kill his captors out of vengeance. Probably just for fun, actually. Now, this isn't the only time that the Le Moyne raiders can be found at a camp with a captive. 
You can also encounter them with a captured state pole tax collector, who they believe to be a federal tax collector. I'm political. If you wasn't political, you wouldn't be no federal tax collector. I ain't federal. It's a state poll tax. But y'all won't take the time to learn the difference. <laughs> I ain't gonna listen to your lies. <gasps> Damn collaborator. <laughs> They're coming for the prisoner. Of course, you can take on the camp of Lemoyne raiders and free their prisoner. Hello, mister. They came out of nowhere, okay? Next thing I was regaining my facilities tied up here. Please, cut me free. Mister, help me. You're free, my friend. You have no idea how thankful I am. You ain't home and dry yet. Run along. I know. I think they hid my things in one of those boxes. Sir, they are yours. There are other encounters that can be had with the raiders, however I'm going to break those down by doing the main story stuff alongside them. However, for now our main takeaway is the Lemoyne raiders seem to use what was their patriotism once upon a time as justification for what they're doing now. And while I don't doubt that some are firm believers in the cause, it would appear as if they are just as bloodthirsty as any other gang you may come across. The philosophy behind what they're doing is just seemingly too broad for their actions to purely be about freeing Lemoyne. Our next main story encounter with the Raiders occurs in the mission American Distillation. Arthur heads to the Sheriff's Office in Rhodes where Dutch informs him that Sheriff Grey has temporarily deputised them in order to help Archibald shut down a moonshine distillery. Along the way there, the deputies come across a rather grisly scene. Whoa! Whoa! Hold up! You see that wagon? Dear me, that don't look good. Oh. I swear they got it in for me. Come on, mister. Try washing once in a while. Keep your eyes open. No. Oh, this must have happened recently. Mm. Hey, come have a look at this. Look. Suit and tie, one bullet clean through the forehead. Well, my money says this is the handiwork of a gang called the Lemoyne Raiders. Yeah, I've run into them. Let's see if we've got any identification. Okay, we should get going. I'll send someone over here later to clean this up. Do you mind taking the reins? I want to have a look at these papers. Sure. I'll direct you. Okay. Frederick Mitchell. Lemoyne State Legislator. Poor feller. Yes, this certainly smacks of the Raiders to me. Bunch of ex-army free staters without an ounce of respect for the law. That's seven government officials they've murdered this year alone. Yep. Not the nicest fellers in my experience. Oh, and I know the Braithwaites are in business with them. No shame. Trash begets trash, my Uncle Reginald used to say. So we learn a lot here. The Lemoyne Raiders definitely target a certain type. Those who appear to be rich, well-dressed, and those in government positions. Anyone working in a way that makes the Raiders believe them to be an enemy of the state, such as officials for a government they don't want to recognise, are prime targets for the Raiders. And as we know, they have no problem killing them, having killed seven already in 1899 by the point of this mission. We also learn that the massively influential Braithwaite family are allegedly in business with the Raiders. Considering that Archibald is loyal to the Greys, this is mere speculation at this point, or at least it comes across in a way where this could literally be thinking the worst of your perceived enemy, 
However, his point is later vindicated when we learn that the Braithwaites are indeed in business with the Raiders. Of course, if you play Red Dead Online, you know that the Lemoyne Raiders are hired guns from time to time for the Braithwaite family. And in the present situation with the Moonshiners, the Braithwaites are involved, as are the Lemoyne Raiders, as after taking out the Moonshiners and destroying their distillery, the explosion is heard by a nearby camp of the Lemoyne Raiders who claim that the Moonshine is property of them. And then later on in the main story mission advertising the new American art, Catherine Braithwaite, the matriarch of the Braithwaite family, claims that the Moonshine is Braithwaite property. Could the Braithwaite family have been the buyers with the intent of selling it on? Could the Lemoyne Raiders have been acquiring the Moonshine for the Braithwaite family? Or could the gang, the Braithwaites and the Moonshiners all be one smooth operation? And if that's the case, I simply have a hard time believing that the Lemoyne Raiders are all about freeing the state of Lemoyne from the United States government's influence anymore. And if you remember that encounter from earlier, one of the younger members of the gang seems to be aware that they haven't made any progress in that pursuit since 1865. Considering the size of the gang, as they're literally everywhere, this to me suggests that they have other objectives too. So maybe this is their skewed belief of a moral justification to serve their interests otherwise. It wouldn't be the first time we see this in Red Dead Redemption 2, and like I said, it could be some mirroring between the Lemoyne Raiders and the Vanderlind gang. This game does a lot of that, so I wouldn't be surprised if my deduction had some truth and intent behind it. Anyway, now that we're here at advertising the new American art, Hosea and Arthur take the moonshine to Catherine Braithwaite, who claims that the moonshine is already hers. However, instead of things going violently south, though, they almost do. Catherine Braithwaite instructs her sons to pay Hosea and discloses that she knows the gang took the moonshine at the orders of Sheriff Gray and instructs Hosea to take the moonshine into Rhodes to the Rhodes Parlour House which is run by Mr Gray and give drinks out for free. And that is exactly what Hosea and Arthur go and do. Of course this makes the Rhodes Parlour House the most popular spot in town for the night and word spreads pretty quickly and before long the Lemoyne Raiders rock up. Drink up! Good evening, gentlemen. Quiet libation. You. Me. You're the bastards who stole the liquor we was gonna buy. Jump. We're in advertising. Come on in and have a drink. That's our goddamn liquor. An honest mistake. Boys, get him. Oh, 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 no. oh, I want both those sons of Lemoyne Raiders. It seems the Lemoyne Raiders were unaware of Catherine Braithwaite's instructions to Hosea and Arthur though it's also possible that this goes against what the Lemoyne Raiders wished for, as they said they were going to buy the liquor, but it was stolen before they got the chance, which means that they were probably going to buy the moonshine from the Braithwaite family. But considering the longevity of the working relationship between the Braithwaites and the Lemoyne Raiders, it's also possible that this was a setup to get Hosea and Arthur killed. In fact, after escaping, Arthur even asks Hosea what he thinks about this. Good shot. You think that woman set us up? No, I don't think so. Maybe. This place is odd. Yeah, I keep seeing those fellas. Some local militia. Clearly not too happy to have some new competition. I'll go visit old Mob Braithwaite, see what's what. So, for now, let me go give old Mrs. Braithwaite some of this moonshine as, well, let's call it a peace offering. Sure. Jose is unsure if it's a setup and suggests the Lemoyne Raiders don't like the idea of another gang on their patch, as it's very obvious by this point that there is. The question is left ambiguous, but it's very clear that the Vanderlyn gang underestimate both the Greys and the Braithwaites come the end of the chapter, so it could go either way. Maybe it was the Braithwaites who told the Lemoyne Raiders where to find their moonshine, though word could have just as easily spread to the Raiders that somebody was giving away alcohol for free at the Rhodes Parlour House. It's also worth mentioning that when the Raiders rock up, the reaction from the citizens of Rhodes is one of fear. The people of Lemoyne do not see the Raiders as freedom fighters. It's a pretty weak point, but the question that this raises is who are the Raiders actually fighting for? With Dutch's gang in the end, he's fighting for himself, and we see his manipulation tactics become more and more obvious as one way of looking at it. The Lemoyne Raiders don't appear to have this charismatic smokescreen, and so in my opinion, the self-interest is much, much more obvious. Also, in this conversation at the end of the mission with Hosea, Arthur mentions that he keeps seeing 
seeing the Lemoyne Raid is about. By the end of the chapter, we come to learn that the Vandalin gang were watched much closer than they realised by both the Greys and the Braithwaites. Maybe the Raiders are watching the gang too, maybe even on behalf of the Braithwaites. Besides all this speculation of their self-interests being at the forefront, the Lemoyne Raiders do have some respect in the community, which we can learn if we head to the Rhodes Parlour House and just grab a drink. If we do this, there is a chance that the Lemoyne Raiders will burst in and cause a scene. Y'all in here chawing? Well, we out there right fighting? Now. Settle down, fella. Loonies. Sunday Southern, you're in my spot. <laughs> now get! Oh, there ain't no cause, no more. Don't pretend otherwise. Damn fools. No one wants you here. Move along. We ain't looking for your company. Okay. You don't leave, I'll make you leave. That's simple. Guess you want a piece. Why can't you raiders leave it at the door? Please, fellas. Go again. Let's see if we can't clobber some sense into you. Damn kid. <laughs> what the? <laughs> My. <laughs> what the? <laughs> you die for that, you good. There's some lead with your name on it. <laughs> Who's talking now? Huh? Holy hell! Oh, oh, Jesus needs to get his head fixed. All right, this has nothing to do with me. Wait, who the fuck is this? After the fight, if we return after a few days, the barkeep will give us this conversation. Well, I hope you aren't planning for any more riffraff with any of those raiders. They got a lot of respect in this community, even if they can act up out of turn. We admire traditional values here, yes sir. And we respect good manners. The bartender tells us that the raiders have a lot of respect in the community, though considering what they said when they burst into the saloon just moments ago, it would appear as if the raiders don't have much in way of respect for the community itself. So maybe this respect is more out of fear than admiration. However, maybe there is this romanticised view of the raiders outside of the gang too. They seem fairly happy to lurk about town and antagonise whomever they wish without fear of repercussions. It makes me think for a notorious gang in the area to be this comfortable that close to law enforcement, there's got to be at the very least a modicum of public favour of non-gang members praising their actions, therefore providing ambiguity that restricts what law enforcement can actually do. On to more open world encounters, we can find another Lemoyne Raider caravan out camped in the Lemoyne wilderness somewhere. This one's actually the same interaction as one from earlier, however this time I killed them. On one of the bodies of the raiders I found a letter, and it reads as follows. William, I am writing to let you know that our raids against the Jayhawkers in Lawrence, Kansas have been successful. There are many times since we set out on this campaign that I doubted there was a god who loved us, but today I have a glimmer of hope. That they call us Lemoyne raiders, bushwhackers and bull Border ruffians does not diminish our fight for a free state, and to be free from the incursions of northerners set on changing our way of life. I hope you will continue to work to recruit more young men to our cause here in Lemoyne. We will ride through their ranks and smite down the oppressors. History is not over and shall be rewritten. It is always darkest before dawn. Sincerely, William Marcus Anderson. This letter tells us two things that I didn't want to disclose earlier purely because it's a lot to drop in the beginning of the video. The Lemoyne Raiders are active outside of the state of Lemoyne, or at least have been which I'll explain in a bit, and they are engaging the Jayhawkers in conflict. Jayhawker is a blanket name associated with free stater militant bands that often engaged in guerrilla warfare against pro-slavery groups that were known as Border Ruffians, which is likely a title the Lemoyne raiders would qualify for. This is the origin of the name Bleeding Kansas, which was a title given to a border war on the Kansas-Missouri border that began in 1854 and carried into the American Civil War. This knowledge combined with the wording of the letter suggests to me that it was written around the time of the Civil War, if not before, which indicates that the Lemoyne raiders have been around since before the Civil War, but it's impossible to be sure because Red Dead is a parody universe set in five imaginary US states that doesn't always conform to historical accuracy besides. So is this an old letter or is it a creative liberty? I guess we'll never know, but I'd put my money on it being an old letter. A good hotspot for finding Lemoyne Raider activity is at the old battlefield in Scarlet Meadows known as Bolger Glade. In the battlefield you may come across three raiders just practicing their shooting
Look at this. Bunch of kids playing soldier. How about a real fight? <laughs> oh, hard. Get him. There's nothing else of real value here and nothing that can be learnt especially, so it's not really the most productive use of time to go over every single random Lemoyne Raider encounter you can have. But what's important about Bolger Glade is this old abandoned church that the Lemoyne Raiders use as some form of outpost hideout. At this abandoned church you can typically find several raiders, and just like any other sort of vermin, they will need to be exterminated. Get trenched in, fellas. You defend this property as long as you're standing. Keep your fire on. Plenty of food here. Shit. Plenty of come here and plenty of fed here. Don't let it all end here, fellas. Idiots. And just like that, Bolger Glade has now been purified of the Raiders' presence. Despite this location being haunted by the ghosts of soldiers who fought here once upon a time at the Battle of Scarlet Meadows, there's not really much else of note. More than an actual hideout in itself, Bolger Glade is more likely a lookout post for Shady Bell. This abandoned mansion in the swamp is the perfect place for plenty of Raiders to gather, and they are here in abundance. You get to come here in a mission called Preaching Forgiveness As He Went, in which Lenny tells Arthur about Shady Bell. Hey, I was in Rhodes talking to some of the colored folk. They said there's a gang of fools holed up in the swamps east of here, who think their war ain't never ended. The Civil War? Yeah, apparently it's still raging in these fools' minds 30 years later. Okay. That ain't my point. These ignorant fools are weapon dealers, and in their dealings sometimes sit on a decent pile of cash. Yeah, been selling weapons to Cuba and South America for years. Anyway, the old boy I was talking to reckoned there might be a bunch of cash just sitting around. And failing that, maybe a nice stash of weapons. With just a bunch of crazies, Gardner? Exactly. Well, worth taking a look at least, isn't it? That was my thinking. Said it was at some place called Shady Bear, deep in the woods. Okay. We learn from this conversation that the Lemoyne Raiders aren't adverse to getting some coin flow going, supplying weapons to South America and Cuba. So in other words, they've got plenty of stuff for us to take. Look, there, the wagon. Let's see where he's going. You're on me now. Right behind you. Let's keep our distance. Just two fellers out on the road. It looks like we're on to something. I think I see something. End of the avenue, between the trees. I might know this place. Old boys here are real tough. Hey, big plantation house. <laughs> Must be Shady Bear. I reckon we can leave our mounts up there, off the trail. Come on. We can get a view on them from that wall up there. Here we get the choice to either fight them head on or send Lenny down to cause the distraction. Lenny creating a distraction is definitely the most entertaining of the options. Go on in, kid. Give them both barrels of charm. Wouldn't try anything less. Uh, today is a fine and fabulous day. As all days, and so may it be. <laughs> Praise be, my people. What do you want? Praise be, my people. Praise be. <laughs> Now, I come in peace to discuss the merit of glory and interest you in eternity. <laughs> Praise be my people. Come on, kid. Be. Now, uh, are you, uh, have you, will you be saved, my people? <laughs> After a short fight, Lenny and Arthur will be the last men standing, and to the side of this abandoned plantation house they will find a cart stacked with weaponry. Come on. This is full of new rifles. We can sell those, right? We sure can. We'll check the rest later. Now, come on. Let's go. However, the raiders don't let go of their property that easy. Hey, riders, coming our way. 
Okay. Keep a cool head. What's a black feller doing coming out of Shady Bell? In one of our wagons. We was uh, doing some business with your brothers back there. You don't look like any kind of folk we deal with. Off the left. Oh. Yep. It is clear that the Raiders, if you haven't noticed up until this point, are incredibly racist. But on the bright side, more of the Raiders are now incredibly dead. And the Vandalin gang now has a wagon stacked with weapons to show for it. And as you can imagine, that's always a nice bonus. And the benefit for Arthur specifically being this is how you acquire the bolt action rifle. Our next main story encounter with the Lemoyne Raiders happens when it comes time to move the camp from Clemens Point to Shady Bell. Yes, the Raiders hideout in the swamp becomes the gang's hideout. However, in order for that to happen, Arthur and John need to head over there and clear it out. Yeah. Still some here. I can see that. You think there's more of them? I'll check the house. You keep watch out here. Die. Any more of you upstairs? I'm coming for you. You hear me? Come out where I can shit. I knew you'd come soon enough. You are some of the coward like you, the bounty hunters, the freedmen, the carpetbaggers, the army of criminals who stole our land and our government. I survived them all. Our fight will live on. Jesus. The final raider here declares the fight will live on and then kills himself. It's a pretty shocking scene. Earlier I speculated that the raiders use their beliefs to somehow justify their actions, and I still believe that, but I think it's also fair to say that it's clear that a lot of the raiders actually believe in their beliefs. Now after this mission, the Lemoyne raiders are no longer a part of the main story. You don't see them again in any main story mission, however, in chapter 4 is when the bounty hunts become available. But more on that, there are more encounters that can be had with the Lemoyne raiders in the city. You can find plenty of antagonistic encounters where they just want to get a fight out of you and they're no more significant than they are in any other instance, but it shows that the Lemoyne raiders are present in Saint-Denis. They might be tough in the countryside, but in the city they're hardly the scariest thing that goes bump in the night. The most interesting encounter you can have with the Lemoyne raiders in Saint-Denis is that you can find them vandalized the city. What are you trying to do? What's wrong with you? You spread the word. The moon ain't lying down. You throw your bomb and then run. You boys are. We got to sit with that. For some odd reason, the raiders have set fire to a bush, however, they've left several messages on the walls. One reads, Lemoyne is a free state. Another message reads, No taxation, period. And another message, reads freedom from the tyranny of taxation. Wouldn't that be nice? It would seem as if the Lemoyne Raiders are now on the back foot, especially considering how small time this is compared to robbing stagecoaches and killing anybody they suspect of working for the government. Onto the bounty hunts, there are two bounty hunts with regards to the Lemoyne Raiders that you can do in the game. The first bounty hunt takes us back to Rhodes for Camille de Millamont. Wanted dead or alive, Camille de Millamont is a member of the Lemoyne Raiders, wanted for stealing state property, crimes against officers of the state, and the murder of a postal mail carrier. He is French, which as you can imagine is the biggest crime of all, and he was last seen in the region of Catfish Jacksons. When you arrive at the camp, there is nobody to be found, and so all you have to do is wait. Good work, my friend. I am proud of you all. That will send a clear message. Let's hitch the horses and relax a little. Well done. Who the hell is he? Intruder and cap! Kill that bastard! You, you want me? Come and get me! Tell me if this ain't tight enough. Get your 50 rope off me, you peasant! 
Now that we've made friends with Camille de Millamont, the Frenchman himself, we can take him back to the Sheriff. On the way back, he chats mad shit, and his friends try to rescue him. You seek to deny my freedom when I fight for yours? I seek to get paid, that's all. What are they offering? A hundred dollars? Two hundred? I wish you was worth a hundred. You're a cheap son of a bitch. I almost didn't bother. What? There must be some mistake. My name is Camille de Millemont. We gonna save you, de Millemont! They ain't taking you to State House! Here they are! Here's where we wipe that smile off your face, bounty hunter! Here. Go on, boys! Kill this son of a bitch! God damn it! There's only one of him! There'll be more where they came from, believe me! I am no criminal. I fight for you, for all of us, for our future. You don't fight for me. <laughs> In the future? Well, that won't be a concern of yours for much longer. Turning on each other. This is what they want. Don't you see that? Come on, don't be an errand boy for the gutless state. Worst mistake you can make is thinking you're better than the next man. That's when you get sloppy and end up on the back of a horse heading straight for the gallows. How do you live with yourself? You are a traitor to your heritage. Oh, well, clearly you never met my pa. I am a realist, that's all. People need hierarchy, they crave it. It is the foundation of civilization. Well, I guess I just ain't that civilized then. Please, take my advice. Better to face the truth now, uncomfortable as it is, than when it's already too late. Here's some advice for you. Skip the last meal. Cowards like you always spoil their britches when the noose drops. You can go to hell. I got the Millamont, and he ain't happy about it. Strike me down. Sheriff. Put him in the cell, then. You are a traitor, Sheriff Tomas. Sending this Yankee against your own. Quiet down. That's always been all you's problem. Too damn noisy for folks good. It seems according to Sheriff Thomas, the Lemoyne Raiders are more of a nuisance than anything else. After getting paid by Sheriff Thomas, that concludes the bounty mission. However, we can come back several times to hear what Camille de Millamont has to say. Ah, uh, look who it is. How does it feel knowing you've put one of your own behind bars for a few dirty government dollars? I didn't put one of my own behind bars. I put you behind bars. And it feels good, thanks. You're a disgrace to your country. How you doing there, partner? Oh, here he is. He's a coward. He's a traitor. Well, I was about to say the same to you. Like you would know the first thing about loyalty. A yokel and a bounty hunter. What we can gather from this is that the Lemoyne Raiders are rather single-minded and not open to others believing things to be different than they are. They only see people who think like them and traitors. And Camille de Millamont's not best pleased that we've taken him in either. The next bounty hunt takes us back to Saint Denis, where at the police station we can pick up the bounty poster for Lindsay Wofford, the leader of the Lemoyne Raiders. You going after Lindsay Wofford? I might be. I might just want to hang his poster up on my wall. Yeah, they're a bad lot, the Lemoyne Raiders. Stupid fellas won't leave good enough alone. One of these days, the government's going to get sick of private militias, you know. One of these days, the government's gonna get sick of all of us. Don't tell him I said that. The bounty. Why are you making this feather someone else's problem? We, sir, are an urban police force. And the Raiders are, well, mostly a rural nuisance. My men simply are not suited for this kind of work. This feather in particular, Wofford, ain't it? Why him? You cut off the head, the body dies. That's the hypothesis, at least. We shall see if it can be demonstrated with the Lamoine Raiders. If the bounty's for this whole outfit, you should have made it more. Guess all that remains is to bring him in. If your hand is false, then so be it. 
For Lindsay Wofford's bounty, we need to head actually outside of the state of Lemoyne to Fort Brennan. And perhaps most interestingly, the game's menu tells us that he's a commander of the Lemoyne Raiders, not the leader. Maybe this is an oversight in detail, or maybe Lindsay Wofford's only who people think is the leader of the Raiders. Either way, the man's got to answer for his crimes, so let's go get him. Lindsay Wofford? I got here a warrant for your arrest, or the other thing if it comes to it. <laughs> a federal warrant? No, no, no. You heard me? Get to oh, your places, no. we're seeing some fighting today! I do not surrender. You won't get a hundred pace. We'll see. For man, stop! against the wall. Got a live one for you. Well, looky here. We got a genuine Lamont Raider in the building. <laughs> Make the poor fella comfortable in one of our cells. <laughs> Bet you ain't felt the bed in a while. Damn traitor's bed. Get me off of here. Calm down. Again, once you're paid by the police chief, that is the end of the bounty mission. However, you can return at a later time to converse with Mr. Wofford. Mr. Bounty Hunter. Mr. Carpetbagger. It's not what man you're messing with now. Y'all are messing with the entirety of the Lemoyne Raiders. Y'all are messing with the whole of the South. We've got your name and our legend to hang. They get me out of here. We all are coming for you, you all. To you. All right, all right, I think Believe you should it. be getting on now. Yankee collaborating scum. Believe it. Last time I warned you, understand? Sorry. I don't know this area so well. The more Raiders coming back on top. How you finding San Denis? Is it the seething snake pit you thought it was? I have, have no to desire to Come on with me, all right? Well, I'm afraid you ain't got nowhere else to go. Apologies for the police chief interrupting that. He appears to be a massive bellend. Something you go need. Go all you like, you sons of bitches. We're gonna have the last laugh. That's right. We coming back stronger. You're looking well, Mr. Wofford. They're feeding you at least. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I go on a hunger strike. Only I doubt word of it will reach the paper. And I doubt you have the resolve. Carry on. 
He says he would go on hunger strike, but he says he doubt it had reached the papers. In reality, Mr. Wofford here has probably not got the guts for it. After all, he may not be the fearless leader full of bravado that he would want you to think he is. In fact, I think it's weird that if he's the leader of the Lemoyne Raiders as the poster suggests, then why is he never mentioned outside of this bounty hunt mission by anybody? Considering there are extensive interactions with the Lemoyne Raiders, both knowing you're present and not. And if he's that vital to the cause, then why did nobody come to rescue him on the ride back? Raiders came to rescue Camille de Millamont. Well, they at least tried, but they didn't come to rescue their leader. That's a bit weird to me. I don't doubt that Wofford had status in the ranks of the Lemoyne Raiders as we saw him commanding those at Fort Brennan, but that's not even in the state of Lemoyne, that's out of the action. I think it's likely more accurate that the Lemoyne Raiders don't have an identified single leader. I think in fact the Lemoyne Raiders are less organised than the authorities give them credit for, which may explain why many of the individuals in this gang seem to be convicted to the cause they claim to fight for, and yet many just perceive them as a nuisance. It may also explain members' loose interpretations of their goals, leading to the murders of people whose death serves no purpose in any cause, simply because of an association with some form of governmental body. And it may explain why some members are filled with hot air and will pick rather small, inconsequential fights, rather than prioritise what they believe to be their revolution. And it may also explain why a gang that seems so driven on hitting home their point and their purpose has their fingers stuck in simply too many pies, dealing weapons out of the country, picking random fights in towns, vandalising the city of Saint-Denis whilst doing the bare minimum to further their cause to the point where it may actually be reversing it, killing insignificant people who just happen to work in a position that's somewhat government oriented. Yes, they may be well trained and disciplined as represented by their well-versed knowledge of guerrilla warfare and the fact that if you pick up any of their guns they're typically pristine, but their strategies are sporadic and nonsensical because there simply is no strategy. Make no mistake, they are a formidable and dangerous gang, but despite their attempts at a militia-styled organisation and their delusions of grandeur, they are simply just that, a gang. They may be comprised of ex-Confederate soldiers and disenfranchised young men, maybe once upon a time they functioned properly as a militia, but I can't find anything that suggests that that is the case by 1899. Maybe I am reading a little bit too far into it here, but isn't that just the immersive joy of a game as detailed as this? There is an article you can find in the Santony Times that suggests they're more mischievous than anything else. It reads as follows. Civil War soldiers turn criminals. Lemoyne raiders turn free status, quest for independence. Now control area near old Shady Bell Mansion. Criminal mischief running rampant. The war for southern independence took many casualties. Almost every family in the country knew of a loved one who had perished in that war. While many had put the conflict behind them and tried to bring our proud nation back together, that very struggle continues to beguile members of the Lemoyne Raiders gang. Initially looked upon as patriotic heroes fighting against tyranny during that conflict, they have failed to let the war between the states pass to history, instead using it as a rally point to wage war on law-abiding citizens, and some say they have become the tyranny themselves. Structured as a militia unit, they continue to recruit young, disaffected men and engage in robberies and arms deals, even declaring that they are immune from tax and other regulation. They speak frequently of freedom and independence, Yet there have been numerous reports of robberies from government institutions and citizens themselves. Current dispatches indicate they have taken up refuge in locations in the swamps and bayous in the lowland country, and many lawmen and bounty hunters are apprehensive to approach the area. Some have said it will take a massive amount of force to bring this murderous gang to heel. Another article in a later issue of the Saint Denis Times after we've been whittling down the raiders reads as follows. They have fled. Lemoyne Raiders, now in Texas. The ex-soldiers, renegades and criminals that loosely comprise the Lemoyne Raiders militia have mostly fled to Texas after repeated clashes with the government and law enforcement. Preaching the free state anti-government, anti-tax doctrine, their message soon grew tiresome for a populace that simply wants to move on after the war between the states. The scrappy militia has spent the last few years robbing government employees and institutions and regular civilians as well, 
After some stinging defeats, the Lemoyne Raiders fled to areas of Texas, where it is reported their disdain for paying tax or supporting the government is more readily received. It's possible this fleeing to Texas could be due to the stinging defeats at the hands of us, or it could be an attempt to calm the populace down by spreading misinformation in the newspaper when the Raiders are still in Lemoyne, or it could even be an attempt at encouragement for Lemoyne Raiders to take off and go down to Texas. However, we can still have interactions with the Lemoyne Raiders directly at this point, so it is possible that this article is rubbish, or we could be dealing with remnants of the militia. For now, I suppose all that's really left is to watch the supposed leader of the Lemoyne Raiders swing. This has been, as you all know, a long time coming. Yeah. The state of Lemoyne has outgrown this man. Lies and perversions of the truth. But you, you have not gotten past your memory of it. Ha! This is a goddamn travesty. A federation built Let's on lies. Let's what? I'm a senior member no. of the outlaw gang they call the Lamorne Raiders. Look here. Guilty of murder. Even got carpetbaggers taking right. bounty jobs. Arms dealing and Damn countless mongrels. atrocities Guess against the great men and state officials. Now, huh? I say to you today, we will not tolerate these intimidation tactics any longer. Come on. For laying waste to this good state and abusing the fine people in it, you will die. Hell, I'm weary of it. Pull it. Now let this serve as a message to any of the ingrates that believe they know better than the United States. The morn will seek out gang activity and eliminate it. The Raiders are finished! And like that, Lindsay Wofford is no more, and that's about as close to closure as the fight against the Lemoyne Raiders is going to get. I've checked everywhere online and tried in game, I don't think there's an execution for Camille de Millamont. And that sort of leaves us with the conclusion of this video. Now, I didn't go over every single Lemoyne Raider encounter, you can see them make deals to acquire the firearms that they then go on to either use or sell overseas. You can overhear them talking about the church at Bulger Glade and how its ruined state must be the fault of the northern oppressors. And of course you can be ambushed by them and many other small encounters that don't really provide very much information about them. And of course there are plenty of benign encounters in which they will antagonise you. But if I went through all of those, Red Dead Redemption 2 will be yet another year old. And you'll be even more upset at me that it's taken me two years almost since the last gang video. So what we know about the Lemoyne Raiders is that originally they were founded around the time of the Civil War. Mostly comprised of members of the 3rd Lemoyne Regiment. Around this time they had some conflicts with the Jayhawkers. And at some point after the Civil War they began recruiting disenfranchised young men to their corps. This may be how their cause got diluted, though it seems as if the clear structure in the gang did eventually fade, leaving it in a disorganised mess that isn't really effective, but is a dangerous nuisance nonetheless, and the public believes them to be just that, a bit of a nuisance. And whilst I don't doubt that the Lemoyne Raiders believe in what they're fighting for, it's very obvious that the gang has different focuses, such as arms dealings overseas and such, and so despite the outward appearance of a rebellious militia, they're just another gang. One made more dangerous by the fact that its members have received military equivalent training, and can organise effective ambushes against you if you antagonise them enough. So in the end, their goals matter very little because they are very, very dangerous. Did they in the end flee to Texas? I don't know. It may have just been the press trying to get the public to calm down, because obviously this is a very dangerous gang. Or maybe the press was trying to get the Lemoyne Raiders to actually think that there were more of them in Texas, and thus trick them into leaving the state. Or maybe by the events of Red Dead Redemption 2, most of the Lemoyne Raiders had already fled. After the epilogue, eight years after the events of the main story, the Lemoyne Raiders can still be encountered in the state of Lemoyne, however it is to a lesser extent which may suggest that many did in fact flee, or were just simply killed. The game even plants doubt in my mind that Lindsay Wofford is the true leader of the gang. Like I said, there's no real conclusion to this one, there just is what is. Which brings us to the end of this gigantic video on the Lemoyne Raiders. Whether you believe it to be a neo-confederate militia, or just simply another violent murderous gang on the loose, remember one thing. If you're in the state of Lemoyne and you see a man wearing a yellow bandana, shoot him in the face.
Thank you for watching this video, I hope that you've enjoyed, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be tremendous, I'd really appreciate it. And of course, with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, please do take care, and goodbye.